your mind. Uh, sorry. Uh, I thought it was the lady's room. Oh, uh, never mind. A powdered nose can wait. Yeah, well, I'm awfully sorry about your friend. Maybe if I asked around at the country club. No, or, no, uh... don't trouble, please. We'll be going now. And as for Mr. Carey's books, I doubt he'll need them where he is. Wherever that might be. <coughs> well, Scobie, so the plot quickens, <coughs> as Bill Biff might have <coughs> cause to say. You know, I think there might be one down there at the station. One what? Ladies' room. I thought you were. Oh, wanted... great thumping field mice. Can't you recognize a double play? Oh, you mean like the Broken Arrow murder case? I had to see that office. Filing room. It was an office. I mean, it, it was an office three days ago. But that was when... Exactly. When Denton Carey gave you $20,000. But Maggie, how could you tell the room had been empty for three days? Firstly, the nameplate had been taken from the door. You could see the screw holes and the shadow shape of where the door plate used to be. And secondly... There was three days' dust on the desk. Oh, come on now. Three hundred murders, Scobie. And I am Bill Biff as well as Major Vest. I know three days' worth of dust when I see it. Maggie, why are we standing here in Beechwood Lane gazing at the rubbish bins? Well, Scobie, see the one marked US Trade Exchange? Mm hmm. We're going to nick its contents. Take it? Steal it? But that's. St it's only thrown out rubbish. How can that be stealing? Come on. Give it here. Hoist it up and hand it over. Oh. Uh, oh. And, uh, now, you go down and get the minivan. And, and Scobie, yes? watch out for the coppers. If you see them, whistle. Your cocoa, Maggie. And your hot meat pie and chips, if you don't mind it among the garbage. Be there in a jiffy. You've got my office smelling like the local rubbish dump. Scobie, as Bill Biff says, I think I see a chink of light. There now. What do you make of that? By Jiminy. That's the missing door plate. Correct. Dean Courtney's door plate. And every other trace of Courtney lying in a heap of rubbish. But Courtney's away on holiday. No, old son. Courtney is with Denton Carey. You mean Capella's connected with a pair of them? There is no pair of them. There's just one man who has two names. <laughs> I'd like to see you prove it. Do you have tomato sauce at all? Yeah. Oh, I do love lashings. Lashings of tomato sauce. What put me onto it was the letters in their names. Denton, Carey and Dean Courtney. Eleven letters each. And what does that mean? You don't do crosswords, do you? You never play with anagrams. Anagrams? You take your dent and carry and jumble up the letters, and what you get is Dean Courtney from the U.S. Trade Exchange. Good grief. Then there is a missing person. Or he never was. Exactly. Like the vicious blaze and sable in the faceless man affair. Then who was dent and carry? Why'd he use the name? Just a cover name. Non de guerre. Matter of routine. Mmm, this flaky pastry. Oh, what a treat. Yes, but Maggie, covering what? Are you suggesting he embezzled $20,000 just to boost my sonny boy? Scobie, don't be dense. He paid to get the message in, the one about the Salvador. <laughs> a bit costly, don't you think? Well, that's the way they work, of course. They? Which they? Who? The CIA, of course. Hmm, aren't you eating? What about a... Cream bun or a raspberry tart. The CIA. Well, they do it all the time. It's international. Subsidize subversive magazines. Plant the democratic message. Sunny boy is not subversive. Division of the dirty tricks department. Look, they wanted 50 words about the Salvador buried in the copy. Salvador's the key. The rest is just cipher. A cryptic code hiding in my decent boy's own magazine. That's why Carey ordered the books. The Roger, the Webster. They are tools of the trade for a transposition or a periodic cipher. Like Spike Woodward in the running riddle case. You mean you're going to crack the code? No, no, no. Irrelevant, old love. It, it's just some boring message to some malcontents to get it past the Russians, I suppose. Oh, Maggie. The crux of this, as Bill would say, is Carey, Oblique, Courtney. 
And we haven't found either of them alive or dead. Maggie, if what you say is true, if I have been duped and double-crossed by international spies... You think I'll try a cream tart? <laughs> yes, yeah, sink my teeth into that. Mm. Yeah, m what beats me, right from when we started, is the missing, missing person. The absence of the woman. Woman? What woman? Mm, 300 murders, Scobie. 300 women. We seem to have to face it. Now, look. Tales of mystery and whodunits might have rules, but... Hang on just a sec. There was a woman. Great flaming comet! Are you saying Carrie that... warned me of her. Some kind of a secretary or advisor. Well, never mind all of that. What, what the devil was her name? It was... Uh, Vera Sibyl. No. No, wait a bit. Vera... Sylvia! Kiss! That was it. Vera, Sylvia, kiss! Kiss? Oh, my God. Maggie, watch out for the crops! Um, well, it, uh, it was here. I had it here. It a tiny scrap. Ah! Got it. Appointments, Monday. Scrawled across with... Kiss? 6 p.m. I thought the blighter had an assignation. There, now. Take a quiz at that. Kiss, 6 p.m. All right. But he signed it with an R. Exactly. Even I was fooled. The R is not a person, it's a place. Grab your flashlight, Scobie, and bring a heavy instrument. We are going back again, back to where the trail is hot. The Hotel Rialto. See anything? Scobie? Yes, the kitchen stove piled with junk. That's all. A table with a leg off and half a dozen mangled chairs. Maggie, this is useless. I should be home in bed. Oh, don't give up, oh, love. I smell the smell of murder here. And it happened here somewhere in this scrap heap of the old Rialto. Oh, yes. And where would you suggest? The seven floors above, old love. Maggie. A bit of a climb. It'll do you good, man your age. Now, mind these broken boards... And poke your flashlight past the desk and up the stairs. Well, a lift would be more like it if there was a lift. Lift? What lift? Scobie, the elevator's missing from the cage. It's, it's somewhere up the shaft. But th that's impossible. Unless, unless there was a rendezvous. Vera Kiss, six o'clock. They had the power on. Carrie caught the lift and... Come on, Scobie, up the stairs and make it snappy. Oh. Oh. Up there, hanging in the dark. Can't quite see. Angle of the stairs. Give me the flashlight. Grab a hold of me. Maggie, what are you doing? I'm leaning out, swinging in the breeze. But it's seven flights below, down there. Yes, I see it. Oh, see it now. What on the lift? The wire came to the outer frame and... Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, me, no chap. Oh, oh, I think I've come up trumps. Easy. Oh. Steady on and... Right. Oh. Maggie, what's the matter? What's up there in the lift? Well, in the words of our dauntless hero, I think you'd better brace yourself. I think I saw a hand hanging out. A dead man's hand. Well, now, here's a pair of upright citizens. Ah, uh, have you waited all the night, then? Yes, the whole night, sitting on an empty petrol can. And we phoned at 1 a.m. Well, never mind. You've got the best man in the squad. I'm Detective Inspector McGee, and them's my boys there will have this whole thing wrapped up in a flash. Uh, seventh floor, they tell me, Sergeant. Yes, sir. And uh, you'd better get forensic and some laddie with a camera. Very good, sir. Now then, what's the story? The story is we waited five long hours. And we've been up on that, it, I can tell you. Shotgun shooting at Canford Cliffs, break and enter on the chine... Man with chainsaw goes burlesque at Branksome. Oh, a lovely time we've had. Well, the body's in the lift, Inspector, and you're going to need some cutting gear to get it out. 
body in the lift. Locked up in the lift. Yes, Inspector. It's a classic locked lift mystery. Uh, Ma'am, have you had experience of some or any kind at all? I'm Major Ellen Best, and this is Scobie Dearden. Now, wait a minute. Just a tick. Now, that rings a chime. I swear it. No, 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 don't tell me. Let me, uh, let me tangle with it. You're... Well, I'm jiggered. Bill Biff Cunningham, the ace investigator. Well, bless you for an Irish cop. You've got it. Oh, ma'am, I have a darling boy that reads them Sonny Boy adventures <laughs> and then belabors me for never putting up me jukes. <laughs> of course, a murder yarn. That's quite a lark. But, but this seedy sort of body in a building, that's a different piece of cake, you know. But no less devious. The dead man is a Yankee spy and he was trapped here by a double agent. Now, wait, wait a minute. Wait, hold it there. That's a heap of allegations. But with 20 years' experience, I can tell you folks, I know the score, without so much as going in the building. You mean you have a theory? I have me Irish nose. That knows it all, Mr. Dearden, sir. Well, these shady streets, the derelicts come here at night, looking for a place to doss. And many of them perish by the dawn. You'll find the mortuary is full of them. Tramps, and deadbeats, and no names and the like. But this man had a name. He had two names. And you could ask Mr. Capella of the U.S. Trade Exchange. Two names, you say. And why would that be? Because he was a spy. Because he was... Uh, I, I'm writing all this down, you see, because my memory's getting kind of creaky. And uh, the man I have to see is... Mr. Capella. Of the U.S. Mail Exchange. Trade Exchange. Uh, which is just a front, of course, for an office of the CIA. Oh, you don't say an office of the CIA. Uh, right then. Well, you've been most helpful. Uh, but uh, you won't be too disappointed when we find the poor man's dead of natural causes, because that's the way it's like to be. Uh, Inspector McGee. Why don't you call me Patrick? <sighs> Carey or Courtney. And you better write that down was murdered, most likely by a woman known as Kiss, and the whole thing hinges on an international plot. Yes. Right. Well, I've got all that. Uh, we'll be in touch. I'll find you in the phone book, or... Don't you want to take a statement? A statement? From the witnesses? This is homicide. Oh, well, I'm not exactly homicide. Uh, I I'm sort of like... Uh, a bit of this and that. Uh, what we call the dawn patrol. You never know your luck. And, well, let's face it, ma'am. You're a fiction writer. And the likelihood of murder at the old Rialto. <laughs> Still, I'll take a statement if you have time. So, why don't you come along with me and we'll sit in the car. And you can tell me, right from the start of the beginning, exactly how it was. Three weeks, Scobie. Three whole weeks and not a word. Still, we've got our cocoa on a rainy night. And my old deck chair to put your feet up. Beastly rain. Rotten business. Oh, don't let it get you down, Maggie. We did the best we could. Well, it's the same old story. The police, they don't want murder on their books. Another unsolved mystery. It makes the official cop look the fool he sometimes is. Well, in a case like this, what would Bill Biff do? Return to the scene of the crime. That's not a bad idea. I've done it. What? I went right over it, inch by inch. With a fine tooth comb. I know. And was there anything there? Not a thing. Just assumptions, anagrams, locked up ciphers, not a shred of proof. Well, there you are then. Dash it, Scobie, it simply isn't good enough. A man comes in, hands you $20,000, and ends inside a locked up lift completely dead. Not a single mark to show the way he died. Isn't that suspicious in itself? Come on, Major. Drink your cocoa like a man. Have a chocolate eclair. Not a single mark. Maggie. Three hundred murders and I failed. Well, we had some good times, didn't we? Pair of bulldogs nosing up the bone, chasing up the stairs, snooping round at midnight. A jolly good rip-roaring time. You've been a true chum, Scobie. Oh, no, not at all. You've got me in my second childhood. And if I had to do it all again... <laughs> Hello. Who's this on the graveyard shift? Good news never comes at midnight. 
steady on and coming. Inspector McGee. Well now, Mr. Din. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh, bless me. Come in, man. You're oh. so... Maggie, pour McGee some cocoa. Yes, I'm doing so. I saw the light passing by. A punch-up down by the pier. Had me go, and I can tell you. Evening, ma'am. I'm pleased to find you here. Oh, I hope I haven't butted in at all. Yeah, Inspector, drink this. Ah. And mind, it's piping hot. A Bill Biff special, if memory serves me right. <laughs> well, what I came about... Uh, uh, now, what I came about was this. This here, a copy of the coroner's report. Now, the answer's written there, plain and clear. The poor man, Mr. Courtney, died a natural death. And that's about the size of it. A natural death? Right. His heart gave out. At his age? Well, trapped there in the lift and all, and being as we think he was, a wee bit claustrophobic, he got himself into a high old state of rage and wild hysteria. Anyway, that's the sum of the autopsy. Well, Maggie, I think we have to face the facts. A good innings, but I think we've been clean bold. That's what I said to Homicide, and I gave the boys a good hard talking to they said as how most murders are done with rage and hammers. Nothing like the fairyland of what you might call it, who done it. And what about the odor of peaches? The odor of what, ma'am? I went back there, right up there, and into the lift, and I smelled the smell of peaches. Oh, that's right. Oh, yes, the dirty rascals. They leave their foodstuff rubbish everywhere. It's those layabouts, ma'am. No wonder we have rats. And what about Capella? Did you speak to him? Speak to him. I took him to the mortuary, poor man. And he identified the body? As Dean Courtney, the way you said. And not as Denton Carey, the man from Mississippi. He'd never heard of him, straight as anything. And what reason would he have to lie to me? Because he's CIA. <laughs> That's just spooks, man. People see him everywhere today. Well, i better be getting going. It's a nasty night that sometimes cloaks some fearful things. Oh, and, um... Now the case is closed. Let that man Capella have his grief. Well, of course, Inspector. What did you expect? Proper broken up he was. I went down to Beechwood Lane and found him packing all his things. He's leaving? Closing down the office? Going home, ma'am. Flying off on Friday with his partner's poor remains. But that's evidence. That's conspiracy. A massive cover-up. Now, now, now. We won't have none of that. The case is closed. It's finished. Done and finalised. And you can't make murder from a misadventure. Now, good night to the Perrys. Well, Maggie? They've bought him. They've bought McGee. Or the CIA and MI5 have done a deal. Oh. Anything to avoid an international scandal. Now, Maggie. Scobie, phone the airport. We are going to check out every Friday flight until we find Capella. Well, I don't know, old girl. I suppose we can locate our easy-talking Yankee friend before he passes through the customs. But I don't see how you can get him for a murder case that isn't even on the books. Get him for conspiracy. Get him as a key witness. He can't just slip away to America now, can he? Well, I don't see how the devil you could stop him. I'll tackle him. I'll, I'll jump the beggar and throw him to the ground. Maggie. Uh, now... Listen to your old friend, Scobie. Oh, you're going to preach at me, just like Father did. I'm going to tell you, Maggie, what I should have told you from the first. Now, some rum old things have happened, I grant you that, and most of them can be explained, but this is not and never has been a Bill Biff murder case. Thanks, Scobie. I'm awfully glad of your support. Oh, look, I had my dreams. You know I did. But I simply missed the boat. Now, I've got my place, and so have you. Maybe we should count our blessings. Doing what? Me writing murder yarns and you putting in the punctuation for a magazine that's past its prime in a time that hardly ever was? That's a cruel thing to say, old girl. Well, look, if you don't want to hear the murder method, I'll tackle it myself. What murder method? The one that murdered your young friend from Mississippi. All right. What was the murder method? It was the smell of peaches put me onto it. Yes, go on, Maggie. Carrie had a date with Vera Sylvia Kiss. You go along with that? Yes, that seems established. Now, we found him on the seventh floor. And that's what fooled me. He wasn't going up. 
He was going down. Returning from the seventh floor? Exactly. I found a matching thumbprint on the buttons, one on seven and another where he pushed for down. Then how come he stayed up where he was? The elevator system fused. Kiss knew that he'd go to the top all right and come straight down again. No one there, you see. He thought she'd be there, but she wasn't. So when he pressed the button for return, the capsule fused and blew the works. What capsule? The one she put behind the button, and that released the peachy smell of tabum. Tabum? Nerve gas. Killed a man in seconds. And you found the empty capsule. You can prove this. Scobie, old boy, it's like the icy finger murder case. We're dealing with experts. That kind of capsule, it just blows to smithereens. Well, Maggie... If what you say is true, or even partly... Look, we'd better phone McGee, and he'd better notify Forensic, because this is... There! There's Capella! Look! There! Coming up the stairs! Maggie, hold it! Wait for me! Just a minute! You there, Capella? Not so fast! Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. Give me my boy oh. scout double arm lock. Oh, oh, come on now, fella. Um, knock, it, knock it off, okay? Look, jeez, what is it with you guys? This has to be some kind of nightmare. Exactly, and I know most of all the answers. Oh, lady, look, I've got a plane to catch. And you're taking out the body of a murdered man, and that's a criminal conspiracy. What is this, some kind of shakedown? <laughs> Will you, just for Pete's sake, get your hands off of me? It's no use, Capella, the game is up. We know you're CIA, oh. the trade exchange. <laughs> was just a front. The Courtney doubled as Denton Carey. Look, will you just pipe down? And that your outfit tried to place the cryptic code in Sunny Boy for $20,000. And furthermore... Okay, okay. Keep the goddamn money. Keep the money? Ah, sure, keep it. From us to you, no strings. It's just a write-off. Buy yourself some silence and let me catch my goddamn plane. Why, you... Uh, oh. I shall biff you where you stand. Uh, uh, you used my magazine. Uh, uh, you dishonored Sonny Boy. Uh, oh. And now you try to buy me. Uh, oh, it's just a subsidy. We do it all the time. You mean the CIA? I mean the trade exchange. And for this, Denton Carey died? Okay. Okay, lady. You and your fat friend. You think I'd subsidize your kitty-winky magazine? Like hell I would. That was Courtney, the man who should have had a hearing aid. Then you admit he was your partner. That Dumbo was assigned to me, fresh from college, shining bright. He took the phone call. I was in the washroom. The phone call said, and I say it loud and clear, lay out 20,000 bucks on Sonderboig. Sonny boy. Get it? Sonderboig? Sonny boy, Sonderborg? The munitions plant? But he was murdered. Murdered for a simple error. Oh, that's your story. Guy like Courtney, a prince of the bluegrass country, he couldn't live with his mistake. Are you saying it was suicide? Look, lady, I truly have a plane to catch. And if you repeat one word of this... Don't threaten me, Capella. I'll just deny it. It'll be too late for that, I think. Because now I know what happened. Courtney made the Sonderborg mistake. A mistake you couldn't live with. And it was your reputation on the line. So you had to terminate with extreme prejudice. And the hit was made by... Yeah, you bet. The double agent, Vera Sylvia Kiss. <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> now, let me through. I'm going. This is it. So long. Goodbye. And, uh, hey! Hey, my plane is going. Someone stop that flight. Hold that plane. Hold the ship. Hold the captain. last. Almost had it in a nutshell. Maggie, hang on. Just a minute. He said he. Capella called the woman. He. My God, I think you're right. And he is Vera Sylvia Kiss. Maggie, grab that paper on the seat. Turn up the sports page. Sports page? Do it. Just you do it while I scribble. Cricket records tumble. Coach denies all... No, 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 no. Further down. Russian tennis star departs. Uh, Scooby, what the... Yes, that's it. Is. Now, what's the blighter's name? Veraski. Vasily Veraski. Vasily Veraski. Got it! Bang, smack on the button, old girl. Vasily Veraski is an anagram of Vera Sylvia Kiss. Good 
Great Scobie, he's on that plane with Frank Capella. And I'll tell you something else, old girl. I'll bet you lunch at the Royal Salad Bowl. There's a third man on that plane. Third man? What third man? The elusive Salvador. But that's a place. You said it was. We thought it was until you started working at the code. Salvador? Another anagram. The ultimate. Well, come on. What's the answer? Davros. Al Davros. Mr. TNT, it's dynamite! Good grief, the munitions magnet! Scobie loves now it all fits in. The deal with Sonderborg, the use of nerve gas, and Dean Courtney in a double deal with... Scobie, someone better stop that plane! By golly, there's McGee! McGee! Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to pucker up and whistle. <whistles> Maggie, oh, for goodness sake! Well, that sort of wraps it up, as Big Bill Mifford said. A sordid and illicit arms deal. Poor Denton Carey. I wouldn't waste much grief, old boy. I think he was trying on what Mifford called a, a plain old switcheroo. You mean he was out for himself, double dealing all the others? He's working, I imagine, for what we call a certain foreign power. Gosh, now that is a vintage murder case. And you did it, Maggie. You did it in the true tradition. <laughs> you are a love, but I have to say it, I, I had an awful lot of help from you. <laughs> Scobie, underneath that overweight, you're a... You're a Bill Biff Cunningham. Oh, I say, Maggie. Ah, there. There we are now. The fabulous detective duo. <laughs> McGee, did you get... You bet your bloomin' life we did. Thanks be to the pair of you. But I thought you said the case was closed. Oh, it was, it was. Officially. But I told my Mick, uh, being as he is my son, and a fan of Sonny Boy, and he said, Dada, he said, if you was old Bill Biff, you'd see the trees was in the wood. Most profound it was, and chastening. Pearls of wisdom from a twelve-year-old. And so you followed through. And so I did. Just a limpin' step behind the pair of you. Oh, I take me hat off to you. Much obliged. Well, if you should ever need our help again, just look us up. We'll be listed in investigations as Dearden and Dearden. <laughs> I think she means best of Dearden, don't you? Double D is what I said. Well, who's the other Dearden? Me, you fool. I'm going to marry you. What? The perfect partnership. The very best. Maggie Best, alias The Major, was played by Margot Boyd, and Scobie Dearden, the editor of Sonny Boy, by David March. Inspector McGee was played by Alan Barry, Capella, Ronald Herdman, Mr. Brewster, Nicholas Courtney, and Denton Carey, Steve Hodson. 300 Murders was written by Colin Free and directed by John Tideman. Sorry. I thought it was the ladies' room. Oh, never mind. A powdered nose can wait. Yeah, well...